transform through time! Yeah! The Power Rangers series has not only stayed on television and Boom Studio are the main creators of the Power Rangers comics. These comics tell diverse stories and tell details that have never been seen in the series. They are darker stories with alternate realities and villains who like to spill blood. One of these stories narrates the life of the most evil ranger that ever existed. Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, who was under the power of Rita, as we talked in the video of the history of Rita. She is the one that finds the sixth coin of power when it arrives to the earth and begins the war with Zordon. The Green Ranger was created to destroy the Power Rangers who could not face the gigantic power of the Green Ranger. In the reality, we know the Green Ranger had a final battle with the Red Ranger and Tommy managed to free himself from Rita's curse and then joins Zordon and the Power Rangers. But in an alternate reality, the Green Ranger, after being freed from Rita's curse, ran away from everyone and was left wandering around in different cities escaping from the Power Rangers. After a while Rita found Tommy and with all her lies convinced him that she wanted to make a better world. Then, Tommy decided to return to serve her and helped her conquer the Earth city by city. As time passed, humans began to embrace Rita's reign. Tommy led Rita's forces into a final battle against the last battalion of rangers just as Zordon was about to create a new power ranger more powerful than any previous one. Tommy broke into the command center while Jason was being infused with this new power interrupting the process before it could finish then the two engaged in a final battle in which Tommy won. Tommy then stole the new power for himself and left the command center clutching Jason's broken helmet. Tommy and his army fought the Power Rangers until they defeated them and destroyed their Zords and then conquered the Earth in the name of Rita. This filled Tommy with ego and behind Rita's back he tried to dominate the Earth by himself. Then, Rita confidently taught Tommy all her spells and when he learned them all he betrayed Rita and eliminated her. Then, Tommy turned Finster into his servant and transformed him into a kind of cyborg called Finster 5 since he carried parts of Alpha 5. From here on, the Green Ranger stopped being Tommy and became Lord Draken, the most powerful and evil ranger ever seen. Lord Draken sought to create a super army so he resorted to power coins and began to transform humans into soldiers with the costumes of different power rangers who each carried a different task called ranger sentries. On the other hand, the old rangers created a resistance movement called the Coinless but Kimberly the Pink Ranger had gone solo to try to avenge Billy's death at the hands of Draken's regime. When Lord Draken found Kimberly he casted a spell that Rita had taught him, he brainwashed her and turned her into his Ranger Slayer. After defeating the Coinless, known as, the Power Rangers of his time, he sought to capture the Power Rangers of the alternate time, the time we know from the original series. Lord Draken managed to capture his counterpart, Tommy Oliver. 
He also captured Billy and Trini, the Blue and Yellow Power Rangers. These two formed a plan to stop Draken and it's that the Trini of the reality of Lord Draken had hidden the last coin of power of the Billy of that reality, so using that coin, they created an energy explosion that eliminated both Draken and his ranger sentries by modifying the teleportation function. The energy blast released by the Morpher during this tactic, shattered Draken's power coin leaving Draken in a brief state of shock and insecurity over the loss of his power. Then, Lord Draken tries to goad his counterpart, Tommy Oliver, out of the reality we know, talking about how friendship is a weakness and Tommy's friends will eventually fail him when he needs them most. He refuses to listen and fights back against Draken. After Tommy's friends find him, rather than face defeat, Draken jumps off a cliff to what Tommy believes is his death. In that battle they were all in the universe of Lord Draken, who never died at that moment, but the energy of the portal takes him to the universe we all know. When he arrives in this universe, he is captured by soldiers of the United States government. After this he is locked in a subway cell in a complex called Promethea which was created by Gray Sterling, the first Red Ranger we had talked about before. In this place he was kept with power restrictions and isolated from the outside world. In addition, he had guards at the entrance so that no one could enter the cell. Even so, this did not prevent the entrance of an unexpected guest who came from the same universe as Draken and who knew all the mess he had made. That guest was Saba, the White Ranger's sword, who appeared to take advantage of the opportunity to kill him. Saba fails and releases Draken, who rips Saba's head off and uses what's left to teleport back to his universe. In the future, we can already see what Lord Draken is going to do in the present, as the Power Rangers Time Force team discovers a rift in space. Wes warns that the rift is also affecting other universes. The Rangers approach with the Megazord but it is attracted and devastated by the energy of the Rift. Because of this the Blue, Green and Yellow Rangers are swallowed by the Rift. Wes tells Jen that she must go to the past to find the connection point where this originated. Jen knew that Wes would be swallowed by the Rift along with the Megazord but she had no choice and went to the past. Before she left, she could see the Megazord disappear with Wes on board and suddenly a wraith of Lord Draken appears and tries to catch her, but cannot. In the present, Jason and Tommy confront Grace about not telling them that she had Lord Draken locked up. Lord Draken then travels to Ninja's house and convinces him to help him repair his connection to the Morphin Grid. This happens in the universe we know and at that time the Rangers had not yet met Ninja. But Lord Draken comes from another universe where time is more advanced. Which is why Draken did know of the existence of Ninja and managed to convince him with lies telling him that he came from the future and in that future, they were friends. After passing several tests, Ninja repairs the power coin and then Draken leaves him unconscious. At the command center Billy and Trini try to repair the Black Dragon in order to warn Coinless of Lord Draken's possible return. The Coinless are those rangers and people who survived in Lord Draken's universe and came together to confront him and help others. This is why Billy and Trini were working hard to repair the Black Dragon to warn them, but they had to take a break. At that moment Lord Draken infiltrates the command center and steals the green chaos crystal. 
This crystal is used by Rita to cross dimensions by accessing the Morphin Grid and can only be charged with energy with the power of the Green Ranger. This is why after Lord Draken steals this crystal, he goes in search of Tommy to be able to charge the crystal and have enough energy to open portals. At that moment, in another place, Kimberly and Tommy had taken a break from all the problems that were happening and had decided to go to the movies. They were trying to talk about other things, but in their heads, there was only the question of how they were going to defeat Lord Draken. After arriving at the place where they were going to take different roads to go home, Tommy tries to kiss Kimberly, but she tells him that it is not the right time and they each go home. After walking away, Kimberly realizes that she did want the kiss and goes back to look for Tommy, but finds a bitter surprise. Lord Draken had appeared and pierced Tommy with Saba to fill the crystal with energy. Kimberly morphs and begins to fight Draken, but at that very moment, Jen, the Pink Ranger from the future, appears. Jen attacks Lord Draken with her weapon, but he opens a portal with the crystal and leaves. Kimberly tries to help Tommy and asks him to please not die. Tommy says his last words, but stops breathing. Regardless of Kimberly's desperate plea for help, Jen tells him that there was nothing left to do, he was already dead. This is just the beginning of the Shattered Grid, and all the things Lord Draken is about to do. Many other stories are connected to this multiversal event, and this is why we will continue to study this story of Lord Draken, who has returned to his universe and was able to reunite with Finster. Lord Draken had combined Finster with parts of Alpha 5 and made him his right-hand man and his only supposed friend. When they met, they hugged and began to discuss future plans, but Finster tells him that although he will help him in any way Draken wants, he still doesn't have all the solutions. Lord Draken tells him that he has the person who will have all the solutions and at that moment he shows Ninja, who had him locked in a small crystal tube. Now Zordon gathers the other rangers in the command center, and they all watch as Alpha covers Tommy with energy. The rangers think that Tommy is still alive, and that Alpha is just trying to save him. At that moment, Zordon tells the rangers that Tommy was dead. Each ranger had a different reaction, and they didn't know what they were going to do with the body. In the end, they decide to leave him in the same place where he died so that the police could find him, and his mother could mourn his death. Several days later they have a funeral to say goodbye to Tommy and we can see how Jason is suffering a lot. At that moment, Alpha warns that Jen had woken up since after the fight with Draken she had been unconscious for several days. When Jen wakes up, she explains to the rangers who she was and where she comes from. She also explains to them what happened in her time and shows them something very important. Jen teaches the rangers that they inspired more rangers for many years and explains what the timeline of all the rangers was like. Because of the event that had started with Tommy's death, the Morphin Grid had tried to protect itself and changed the timeline and locked each Ranger team into a kind of pocket universe so as not to create paradoxes. She also explains that the rift she saw in her time started in this time with Tommy's death as that is like a small fracture that over time gets bigger until it breaks, just as it happened in the future. Kimberly presents the idea of traveling to the past to stop Lord Draken from killing Tommy, 
but Jen tells her that she can no longer travel to the past because of the rift and that everything from the past is now sealed. In the Samurai Ranger's pocket universe, Lauren is practicing new moves and at that moment Lord Draken arrives with a large army. The Samurai Rangers do not know who they are and feel confident as they have symbols of power that protect the house, but this was not enough, and Lord Draken manages to break through the shields. The Rangers begin to fight against the army and defend their house, but despite all the effort, the army manages to defeat them and take away their morphers. Lauren the Red Ranger manages to escape with the help of the Blue Ranger and Lord Draken gives the order to look for her. In the midst of this chaos, Jen realizes that all this is happening and thanks to Billy and Trini, they manage to repair and change certain things in the Black Dragon, Alpha was able to send them to that universe of the Samurai Rangers to help with the situation. The moment they arrive they notice the army and Zack wants to attack, but Jason tells him that they should be smart since the army managed to wipe out a team of rangers. Jen realizes that there was one more ranger and they manage to save Lauren before the army takes her out. Elsewhere, Draken is working with Finster on his new plan, a combination of the morphers he took from the samurai rangers. Although Finster was unsure, Lord Draken told him to start the process and, in the end, they achieved the result they wanted. Draken was filled with more power than before and with a new transformation. For this process they only needed one morpher and Finster didn't know if they had to use all the other morphers of the samurai, but Draken tells him that thanks to Ninja he could understand that he doesn't need all the morphers, but one of each kind. The other morphers that are left over will be used with the whole army. The moment the samurai rangers fell, Zordon uses part of his reserve power to summon a meeting with the three emissaries. By using his remaining power, Zordon will no longer be able to join the Morphin grid when he dies. After calling the meeting, the three emissaries arrive and Zordon begins to talk to them about the threat Lord Draken poses to everyone. Zordon asks them to talk to the Morphin masters to disconnect Lord Draken from his power. The three emissaries tell Zordon that the Morphin Masters cannot get involved in human problems and cannot decide the fate of worlds. Zordon at that moment shows them all the achievements the Rangers have made and the great struggles they have gone through as they have been warriors who have fought with courage and kindness. He also shows them how the Tommy Oliver from another dimension became Lord Draken and how he was affecting all the other dimensions with armies and death. Even with all that Zordon showed them, the emissaries thought that these problems were just a grain of sand and Zordon was seeing them as a mountain. They thought that the rangers were going to be able to solve this problem alone and that the Morphin Masters did not have to be involved. Zordon pleads with them one last time, but they just tell Zordon that they were waiting for the day when he would join them in the Morphin Grid, but now it is not going to be possible because he used his remaining power to call that meeting. After sending Zordon back, the three emissaries begin to dialogue and doubt if they made a good decision or if it was a mistake since Zordon is a great sage who would never play with these delicate issues. Lord Draken begins to invade all the pocket universes that have been created and Jen realizes this. Alpha manages to make a connection so that Zordon can send a warning message to all the multiverses at the same time and tells them about what Lord Draken is doing. At that point they receive a connection from Dr. K, a genius scientist who was the creator of the Power Rangers RPM arsenal. 
She tells them that she managed to connect with them despite belonging to a different dimension and informs them that they have been under attack for eight hours. She also tells them that they have managed to stop Lord Draken's cannons, and this has helped them to resist in the battle. Unfortunately, the connection is lost before she can help the rangers of this dimension understand how to stop Lord Draken's cannons. Suddenly they receive a transmission from the coinless and say they lost the base, but think they possibly have a way to stop Draken. The rangers tell Alpha that they should go to Dr. K first so she can upgrade their morphers, but Alpha tells them that inside and outside of Corinthia they are blocking teleportation and could only manage to appear 15 kilometers away from there. Because other alternate universes were under attack, Jason gives the order to split up to visit three different locations at the same time. Zack, Trini, and Billy would go to the world of Draken to the coordinates of the coinless. Jen and Kimberly would have to go find other rangers who have survived to bring them to the command center of this universe. Jason and Lauren would go to Corinthia to find Dr. K to tell them how to stop Draken's cannons. Meanwhile, Draken from his base is dialoguing with Finster about all the morphers they have prepared to give more powers to Lord Draken at the same time. At that moment, Draken is remembering what happened in the Zeo Rangers universe. Draken had impersonated the Tommy from that universe and managed to obtain Adam's morpher without harming any rangers. He also recalls conversations with Jason as he tells him how he feels about Tommy and how he has been a great example to the other rangers. At the end, before leaving back to his base, Draken has a conversation with the real Tommy from that universe and tells him that he doesn't understand how the other rangers idolize him and then murder him. This is something Lord Draken also tells Finster as he fails to understand what it is about Tommy that makes others love him. Finster tells him that love is something that should never make sense. At that moment, one of the soldiers arrives and tells Draken that Dr. K had discovered how to evade the cannons. Because of this event Lord Draken decides to bring more reinforcements to Corinth but this is to be after his transfer of power. Jason and Lauren arrive in Corinthia in a part of the desert and then Jason calls the Rex to help them on the journey. On that trip, Jason and Lauren talk about their lives to get to know each other better and realize all that Lord Draken has damaged. In the world of the coinless, Zack, Billy and Trini arrive in a destroyed world. At first, they couldn't recognize where they were because of the destruction, but then they realized they were in the Angel Grove Juice Bar. At that moment the Coinless arrive and tell them that Skull was undercover for a long time inside Lord Draken's troops. Skull was able to see everything that was going on inside the base and realized that Ninja was being held under a spell. The rangers of this universe don't know who Ninja is since they live in a later time than the coinless so they had not yet met Ninja. The coinless explain who Ninja is and say that he is the key to defeating Draken. The mission is to save Ninja. Meanwhile in Corinthia, the RPM Ranger operators are battling against Lord Draken's army who are now also samurai because of the morphers they have stolen. In the middle of the battle, a noise is heard, and it was Jason with the Zord coming to help the Rangers. Jason and Lauren manage to wipe out the few remaining soldiers and exit the Zord to meet up with Dr. K. The ranger operators talk to Jason to find out who they are, but he tells them there is no time and tells Dr. K that they must take her to his dimension. Suddenly, 
Lord Draken appears with his new army including the Psycho Rangers and several others. Now we can see a Lord Draken with a slightly different transformation sporting some black parts. We can also see SPD Squad A and behind Draken is Korag the Wolf Knight, a villain from Power Rangers Mystic Force. Elsewhere, Kimberly and Jen are traveling through space and have a conversation about the side effects of time travel. Jen tells Kimberly that although she is hoping for a miracle, they really can't save Tommy anymore and that even if that were to happen, still, things are never the same again. Kimberly and Jen come across Terra Venture, the Galaxy Rangers base and descend to go see what had happened there. Although the place looks empty, they find a sign of life for the moment and surprisingly meet Astronema. She had been one of the worst threats in the universe, but at that point they were way ahead in time and Astronema had already been reformed and turned into a pink ranger. Each pocket universe is at a different point in time, and this is why Jen is a bit confused as she is not the ranger she expected. Kimberly and Jen take Astronema to the Zord and there is when we can see that there are many other rangers that they have been able to rescue. At that moment, they receive a message from Alpha saying that Jason and Lauren arrived in Corinth and found Dr. K. But they need all the help they can get as they were currently battling Lord Draken and his entire army. Meanwhile, Dr. K has been able to change Lauren's Morpher so that she can resist Lord Draken's cannons and that is why she makes her attack with a big explosion. On the other hand, in Draken's command center are the Coinless along with the other rangers trying to make a plan to rescue Ninja. Zack from the Coinless and Zack from this dimension, are having a dialogue as they feel weird to be able to see each other. Then, they both enter the command center to rescue Ninja with the help of Skull. Back at the Corinthian battle, several rangers try to attack Draken at the same time, but he throws a great energy at them with his sword, and they all fall to the ground. Draken removes the Morpher from RPM's Yellow Ranger since he didn't have a Morpher like that yet. At that moment, the other rangers arrive along with Kimberly and Jen, but Draken's cannons take away her powers, now the supposed help has been for nothing. Jason pleads with Dr. K that they should stand down as she is very important, and the rangers can do nothing more. The doctor tells Jason that in order to teleport from there without leaving the city, they must destroy the building. At the Draken base, both Zack and Skull manage to free Ninja from the spell, but unfortunately Finster discovers them and sends the soldiers to shoot. The shot was going straight for the younger Zack, the one from this dimension, but the older Zack, the one from the Coinless, pushes him away and gets shot. Skull sacrifices himself and tells Zack to leave with Ninja as he is the last hope. In Corinthia, Jason manages to break the building with the Zord, but it is badly damaged. At that moment, Jason asks Alpha to teleport them back to the command center. On the other side, Zack arrives with Ninja and gives the bad news to the others of what had happened. Then, Alpha teleports them all at the same time. Back at the command center, some rangers along with Zordon, Ninja and Commander Kruger, talk about Lord Draken's plan and how damaged the Morphin Grid is. Ninja tells them that Draken is weakening the grid so he can get to the heart. All the signals are sent from his tower to constantly transmit through the grid. 
Jason then introduces the group to Grace and Dr. K so they can both help figure out how to stop Draken. Just then, a ship arrives at the command center and all the rangers freak out as the command center is in a pocket dimension of pure energy. Out of the ship comes Andrus, the Red Ranger from Power Rangers in space and the person who killed Zordon to save the universe. Andrus tells the Rangers that he already knows where the other Rangers they kidnapped are. On the other side, Draken is very angry about Ninja's release and now he has kidnapped Skull. At that moment, Finster tells him that he managed to find Ranger Slayer, but they can't look for her since she is way back in time. Draken asks her to communicate with her somehow and Finster manages to open a portal so they can talk. Draken begins to talk to her, but Finster realizes that Kimberly is no longer under the spell and Draken tells her that this will be the last time they see each other. In the command center, the tension can be felt and as Grace repairs the morphers, Jason tries to make peace with her. Just then Kruger arrives to discuss the plan of attack and says they need a big ship and Grace offers Terra Venture. Alpha interrupts them to give them the news that other rangers from other dimensions were answering the call he had put out through the grid. When they go outside, they see one of the most incredible images of all time. Many rangers arriving from space to join the coming war. Many rangers from all eras come together answering Alpha's call to defeat Lord Draken. A very epic and emotional moment for everyone, as this is the help they needed. Although the initial plan is to destroy Draken's tower, they still have no plan to defeat him. This is why Zordon has been thinking for a long time about a plan to defeat him, but at the same time it is still very dangerous. Zordon pays a visit to Rita together with Commander Kruger to ask her to help them stop Draken because if he destroys reality then he would also be destroying her reality. On the other hand, Draken prepares for battle by melting the ninja steel and transforming Saba. Back at the command center, many rangers start getting to know each other and Jason prepares to give a big motivational speech to all the rangers before the war begins. After the speech, he gives the dragon powers to Kimberly so she can control the Zord. When they arrive on the moon, they are surprised by the great amount of soldiers that Lord Draken now had since he didn't have so many before and then. The battle begins. In Draken's command center are Zordon, Rita, Ninja and Kruger as they must be in the center of Draken's energy to be able to do the magic. During the battle, the rangers realize that Draken's sword can now steal the other's powers. At that moment, Serpentera, Lord Zed's Super Megazord, awakens, but is now controlled by Draken. Quickly, Serpentera destroys several zords in one bite due to the large size difference. Several rangers try to attack Draken but he takes away his powers in one blow with his sword. Surprisingly, Kimberly throws the dragon's word with the power bow straight at Draken's chest and although he thought it had not caused him anything, he suddenly becomes very weak and returns to his command center to then find the surprise that Rita, Zordon, Ninja and Kruger were waiting for him. Rita had cast a spell with a candle, just like she did with the Green Ranger to take away his powers. At that moment, Rita says that she is not going to wait any longer and plans to take his life right there, but Zordon and Kruger start to complain to her, telling her that this was not the plan. At that moment, 
Finster arrives to save Draken and with Lord Zed's staff he gives an energy shock to everyone. Finster tries to get rid of the candle, but Draken tells him it is useless as the candle continues to consume his powers. Draken tells Finster to fill it with the power of all the other morphers, but Finster tells him that it is unstable since he only needs one morpher from each group. Draken thanks Finster for being concerned for his life, but then Draken breaks his neck. Outside there is a terrible war, but Draken goes in search of all the morphers to fill himself with power and presses the button to begin the transfer. The war continues and the rangers try to take down the tower, but Serpentera, Lord Zed's sword that Draken now controls, prevents them from getting there. The rangers, in search of a solution, decide that they are going to combine several zords from different dimensions and eras so that they can be a good opponent to stop Serpentera. Jen does the math and decides which zords to use and asks the rangers to name them. This unnamed zord, they make it grow to the same size as Serpentera and Jason asks Noah, the blue megaforce ranger, to summon his zord so he can use it to destroy the tower. When Jason enters the zord he asks the rangers who are handling the giant super mega zord to stop Serpentera so he can approach the tower and shoot. At that moment, they restrain Serpentera and Jason prepares to shoot, but Serpentera manages to escape. Jason fires the shot and at that very moment Serpentera destroys the Zord in one bite. Everyone is surprised because no one knows if Jason is alive or dead, although no one saw him get out of the Zord. With the shot, they manage to destroy the tower and the giant super mega Zord pierces Serpentera with the sword. At that moment, the sky is destroyed and from the crack comes out a giant Lord Draken with a different transformation. In this transformation we can see that his entire suit is black and gold with the heart of the Morphin grid on his chest. They all start to enter the ship to get out of that dimension, including Ranger Slayer who was accompanying them at that moment. When they are all in the ship, they try to leave that dimension, but all of a sudden, a glow covers them completely. At that moment, time changes and transforms into a new reality created by Lord Draken where Rita is his mother, Zordon is his father and Kruger is his dog. In this reality Draken is treated as a hero and as the most glorious thing. Suddenly, Kruger starts barking and Draken realizes that there is a threat outside and he must go out to fight. Draken makes his morph with the heart of the Morphin grid embedded in his chest and realizes that the threats are a tiger and a hawk in energy form. We also get to see the Dragonzord and White Tigerzord controlled by Jen, but they don't attack the energy animals, as they say, Draken has everything under control. Draken attacks the animals and sends them to the bottom of the sea and then is interviewed by reporters like a hero. Among those reporters were Trini and Zack who treat Draken as the only hero there is. Zack asks Draken if he is worried that animals are attacking more and more often, and he gets angry about this question because he says that he will not allow anything to hurt the people of his world. At that moment, he hears a voice asking him, Even if your world is a lie? That was the voice of the real Tommy Oliver appearing from the reflection of the glass of a camera lens telling him that nothing of that world should exist. Tommy's voice could only be heard by Draken and this is why when Draken responds, the reporters were confused. Draken decides to end the interviews and leaves the place. We then get to see that Finster is the butler and Billy has become Draken's mechanic. In addition to this, 
Jason and Lauren have a ninja academy to teach others about carrying Lord Draken's message. At that moment, Finster warns him that there is another attack from the energy animals. Now among the animals there is a bear which gives Draken a hard blow that knocks him to the ground while he keeps hearing Tommy's voice claiming him about that fake world. At every moment of the battle Draken keeps seeing Tommy in every reflection he has near him which tells him that he can't even defeat a hallucination, even though he still thinks he is a god. At that moment, Draken launches an energy beam that destroys part of a building and breaks all the crystals, while Tommy keeps tormenting him telling him that he is weak since he killed all the Tommies from all dimensions to create this false reality. Draken goes crazy saying that Tommy is not real and starts destroying everything he finds. In the background, the voices of the three emissaries are heard saying that this is the opportunity they were waiting for and suddenly Tommy comes out of the reflection of one of the broken glasses on the floor. Tommy now had a physical form and goes in search of the Power Rangers to make them wake up from that false reality. He then arrives at Kimberly's workplace, who was working as a waitress, and kneels when she sees Tommy thinking he is Draken. Tommy frees her mind and brings back all the memories that had happened throughout the battle against Lord Draken, including Tommy's death. At that moment the other rangers appear. Elsewhere, at Draken's house, he tells Finster that his world rejects him as he can see the energy beasts getting stronger and his mind is betraying him. Finster tells him that he just needs to relax as he has been working hard and should leave in the car as Billy finished repairing it. He also tells him that he hasn't seen Billy since he left with him. At that point Draken realizes that something wasn't right since he hadn't been looking for Billy. Then we can see that Tommy begins to tell his story and says that it all started when the ranger slayer from Draken's world saved him and told him that when the time was right, he would understand. She had thrown an arrow at him that contained a shard of the green chaos crystal, the same crystal that Draken used to charge him killing Tommy. This caused that crystal inside him to activate and pull Tommy's essence out of time and space. His soul was in nothingness, and he could only be a spectator, watching Draken gain ground and defeat them while he could do nothing. Tommy then introduces the rangers to the three emissaries and tells them that he was able to wake them up and connect them back to the Morphin Grid. The three emissaries began to apologize because due to their arrogance they did not realize that such a powerful being could have come and defeated them and took the heart of one of the masters inside the Morphin Grid. When he obtained this heart, Draken made whole universes disappear and created this new false reality. Despite everything, the emissaries managed to escape from the Morphin Grid and arrived at the same space where Tommy was. From there, they began to gather forces and plan how they were going to infiltrate Draken's new world. Tommy says that the energy animals are the doubts that destroy Lord Draken inside him and the only way to defeat him is to remove the heart of the Morphin Grid. At that moment, Lord Draken enters and starts attacking the rangers in a terrible way. Then Lauren and Jen arrive in the Dragonzord and the White Tigersword, and Tommy gives them the order to attack him with everything. While Draken was distracted with the Zords, Tommy seizes the moment and removes the Morphin Grid's heart from its chest. Because of this, they both run out of powers and enter an empty place where they begin to fight, and Tommy manages to defeat Draken. At that moment, 
Reality begins to be destroyed and the emissaries open a portal so that the rangers can escape. In spite of everything, Tommy tries to save Draken, but Draken turns his back, and the emissaries take Tommy away. Now they are all inside the Morphin Grid and the emissaries tell them that they can't use the Morphin Grid to rebuild reality, but the rangers can, although many things will never be the same again. They also realize that if they go back to the way things were before then they will have no memory of what happened. Despite this, the rangers decide that they must return everything to the way it was as it would save all the worlds. This means that Lauren and Jason's relationship will never happen and neither of them will remember what happened. Now the shattered grid is back to normal and again the Power Rangers save everyone, but this time including universes and other dimensions. If you like Power Rangers, like this video, and subscribe to this channel, for more Power Rangers stories.